Um, thanks for coming along. This is the, the first of uh, evening sessions I'm trying out. Um, originally, so the original idea, this was at request from um, our students on the design thinking modules, the undergraduates and the postgraduates. We've been using Miro for the last couple of weeks for running design sprints, collaborative design sprints during our uh, Friday workshops, which are two hour long workshops. And a big chunk of that has been taken up with us doing collaborative design sprints in teams. So we're doing stuff collectively together on a Miro board, which you'll see in a minute, and then going into breakout rooms and working on parts of the Miro board in the breakout rooms and then coming back and looking at what we've done. Um, and it's so I'm, you know, I was, um, as I was saying a few minutes ago, uh, Miro's only just been approved by the Information Security uh, Committee process at Warwick for use in teaching and uh, other activities. So that's only just happened. The business school sorted that out. It took three months to do. It's a very long process. It's quite a, oh, it's not easy to get that. Uh, so we are now cleared to use it. Um, there are some limitations. So just going, I'm just showing you first of all, here is the main Miro website. Uh, and it says, oh, no, what I want to do is just show you, first of all, Miro.com. So when you first go to Miro.com, this is what you see. And you'll find somewhere on here a way in which you can sign up to use it uh, for free. Uh, anybody can do that. And they get a fairly minimal version of it. So um, I think it's very limited in the number of boards you can create and the way in which you can collaborate with other people. However... If you are a student at a higher education uh, institution or a member of staff, you can uh, go to uh, miro.com education dash whiteboard. Let me just copy that. So students on the design thinking modules, you might want to do this and apply for an account because you can use this in your group projects really well. So I've just posted into the um, chat there a link to this. It's pretty quick. You fill out a form, you send them some. I think I had to send a, f um, a photo of my university card and a little bit more information. And I got an account straight away. And it's pretty much a full account, it's fully featured. You have all of the templates, all of the many, many, many different uh, uh, diagram types, collaboration types. If you're a teacher, you get to, um, in fact, what I'll just do is go over to, so this is what Miro looks like to me. This is the desktop version, although the browser-based version is pretty much exactly the same. Um, can I zoom in on that? No, not really. So um, with the teacher, uh, version you can uh, add as many boards as you like and um, invite up to a hundred people to join uh, and have access to your to to your boards. Um, it is also possible to share a board by a URL and set a password on it as well, which is what we've been doing in the design thinking uh, modules uh, so far. So. Um, and but the student one, I think it's limited to you can create a team of 10 people so you can invite 10 people in to join you in a team. And this is the when you first start the Miro application and log in, this is what it looks like. Uh, so I'm just actually before I forget, going to point out that over on the right here, um, there is always uh, these little items, some notifications thing. There's a kind of messaging system built into it. But also the question mark brings up all of the guides, the support. So it's got a pretty comprehensive uh, set of guides to how to use Miro and what you can do with it. So, I mean, it's, it's brilliant. The software is, have, was created for and um, is largely marketed towards um, professionals in design, uh, engineering, business fields. Uh, so architects and basically wealthy professionals, consultants. They have like a consultancy license model where a consultant can get a license for this and then they have a certain number of licenses that they can give out to clients. So that's their business model, um, but they're providing this education uh, side to it. Um, 
free of charge, uh, which is nice. There's, I mean, we've got a few members of staff here. So uh, the official line on this from the academic technology team, our advice is that although it's free, and I've had some conversations with the Miro support people about this, trying to get uh, more certainty about um, how long it's going to be free for. I mean, they're kind of saying it's free for life, but we don't have a contract with Miro, which means there is a risk if you were to use this as a uh, assessed activity w in 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 a way such that if Miro suddenly become became inaccessible, the students couldn't complete their assessment, then that would be a problem. There is a risk that that could happen. OK, so we've got to make that clear from the outset, which is why we're kind of saying, OK, use it, look after it yourself. There's no official support from the university for it, uh, but actually it seems pretty good and the deal seems pretty good and it seems pretty sound. And it is something that is very widely used in uh, lots of big businesses. OK. OK, any questions so far while I have a sip of? So there's the help um, system, which is always there available top right hand corner. Um, so then we have, uh, oh, I should mention that initially you get a team set up. So my team was called for some reason, they'd call it the education team, I guess, because I'm a teacher. Uh, so you set your team up. Um, I've given them a photo, changed the name to the Meerkats just randomly, uh, give me some information about what I can do. I've got 197 people I can add to my team, invite to it, etc. So you have a team and you can get people in your team, invite them to join, and then sharing uh, and collaborating is a little bit more straightforward and um, simple. But you don't need to set up a team to collaborate with people, which is really important. So going back to the boards. OK, so you can then set up boards and um, they can be organised into projects. So I set up three projects uh, to organise the different kinds of work I do. One for my academic technology work, one for the design Warwick, that's the uh, undergraduate, postgraduate modules and a lot of other design research, design thinking related stuff. And there's one there for my inspired learning business uh, work as well that I do a consultancy business. Um, so I've organised them into projects and then within those projects created boards. So, OK, what is a board? A board is a massive virtual whiteboard space into which you can put all kinds of different content and spread it out as much as possible. And it's kind of, I don't know if it is infinitely expandable, uh, but you can. So if I open a board now, uh, let's go for assessor technology. So this is our part of my academic technology work. Now, if you can't see the detail on any of this and you want me to zoom in, please say so, because one of the key things is let's do some zooming. So I'm using command minus and command plus on my keyboard. You can if you've got a, a, a Mac. I don't know how it works on Windows, but you can use gestures to zoom in and out as well and move around the board. So if I zoom all the way out, I don't think it is infinitely expandable. You can see that there's a huge amount of whiteboard space that you can use. And if I start zooming in, back in, there we go, it's a little bit slow responding. You can see that you can actually zoom in and create huge amounts of detail. Also, it's, is that one locked? It's possible to shrink any of these elements down so you can fit more onto your board as well. So it's not like a real whiteboard because you can uh, fit pretty much huge amounts in, shrink it down, spread it all out, move it around very easily. Bottom right hand corner of the screen, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this. Uh, there's this little control which allows you to pop up a map of your entire massive whiteboard space and move around it by dragging the little rectangle. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, dragging the little rectangle around the map to the different features. 
Okay, so navigating this massive whiteboard space is really easy and fast and intuitive. Um, there's a couple of other ways in which you can navigate it that I know about. I think there's probably quite a lot of features in Miro that I don't know yet and haven't really discovered. Uh, another thing you can do is for any of the elements, and uh, this is a frame. Oh, I want to switch to the uh, pointer here uh, on the toolbar. So the toolbar is on the left of all the tools. We'll look at those in a minute. Got the pointer so I can select things. And then that selected that whole frame. Frames are really important concept in this, and we'll get back to that in a minute. I can click on those three dots. And I think in the design thinking um, modules, we I've used this approach a few times. Copy link. That gives me a URL. Um, that so long as I've given the sharing permission so that people can access this board, if they if I give them that URL, it takes them straight to that board in their web browser. So if I'm working on this particular frame and I've got some colleagues I want to do a collaboration with and I want to get them in and have a look at it, then I can share that link with them, make sure that um, They've got the password if I've set a password and it goes in their web browser and fills that frame in Miro and they can start collaborating. So earlier in the week, no, sorry, it was last week um, in one of our teams um, Monday morning get togethers. I think it must have been Monday. Um, I'd created this frame, which is what needs to be considered when evaluating a technology. And I put a few things on there. Uh, to start off with, just a few sticky notes with a few bits of ideas. And then at the end of the meeting, I just said, OK, guys, uh, click on this link, go to the frame and just give me your ideas on what needs to be considered when evaluating a technology. OK, so that's the one of the patterns for collaboration with this. You can set up a space or create something on your whiteboard, create a link and send people straight to it. OK. Which is absolutely brilliant. And notice that this object here, accessibility, that's got a link on it as well. It's possible to add links. I'll do it on this one here. Add links between. So link to allows you to link to any other item on the board as well. So you can interlink between them. If I click on that accessibility link, it goes off to a frame called accessibility. So you can kind of, uh, the students should be thinking, mm, OK, so I could set up a narrative here for my design study in this, where we're going from bit to bit, which is really cool. Uh, can did I you notice can how? Ask something. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Rob, thanks very much for that. Um, what I got something set up that I was hoping students could use, but then I got cold feet because I, I thought they'd have to register with Miro in advance. Oh. Yeah, now let me just show you the sharing options over in the top right hand corner. Clicking on share. And one of the options there is um, anyone with the link can and I've set it to edit. And you can you can set a part, you can leave it without a password or you can set a password and then give them the link to the whole board or give them the link to a specific part of the board. Uh, remember to give them the password if you set a password. They don't need an account. They don't need an account. OK, no, because it was it was kind of last minute dot com and I thought I can't yeah. risk it. <laughs> so I, I left it and, um, you know, the modules moved on since. But um, yeah, I'm I'm planning to use Miro. I think it's a good tool. In design thinking collaborations, you may want to just get a whole bunch of people, general public or anybody collaborators very fast into your board to start doing stuff. Uh, and that's a great mechanism. If you set up a team, then you can control the team access as well. Um, I guess in design thinking, what we're kind of the way we're working here is your core design thinking team. You want them to have Miro accounts that they can set up and manage these design collaborations, these sprints. Uh, but um, if you just want to get loads of people in, then just use sharing the link. OK. So copy the link and give it to them and they can open it in the web browser and go straight to 
uh, Miro. I, I think it might be the case, I haven't tested this actually, that if they've got Miro installed on their computer and they use that link, it will offer to uh, open it in Miro as well. I'm not sure how that works. But the cool thing that happens then is, and we, we saw this happening, it was just amazing in the, um, the sprints we've done, is you start to see everybody's cursors uh, as they get onto the board you start to see their cursors of where they're um, doing stuff moving around the board and you can see what they're doing. So you can see it all being updated live and you see the cursors move around and everything. We'll do that in a minute, actually. So there's an option there to show or hide the cursors, which they can be a bit annoying. Um, OK. So with this one, so this board, it's pretty much a random um, load of stuff so i've done i've just fairly kind of randomly put things on here and uh just brought people in to do bits of collaboration as needed and most of what we've got here is post-it notes so the toolbar down the left hand side has all the stuff that you might want to put in so post-it notes comments oh i didn't want to do that comments, uh, connecting lines between things, shapes, text. Um, that's cards, which are kind of little information um, blocks. So you just see the title, you click on it, and then you get more information comes up. Um, pen, there you go. If you're using this on an iPad, for example, and the iPad app is really good, then you can annotate with your Apple pencil which is what I do sometimes and you can draw stuff straight on um, or you can use your mouse to draw things or your trackpad as well so oh I've just vandalized it <laughs> uh, and there's loads of drawing tools and options different colors uh, thickness different types of pen as an eraser a uh, smart drawing is Oh, it tells you just there. So if you draw these shapes, it will turn them into a neat shape for you, uh, which is good. That's quite handy because I'm not very good at drawing. Um, I do it. We do a lot with just the sticky notes, though, which is brilliant. So there's much, some more advanced kinds of things you can put onto your board. Clicking on that template icon. Um, you get access to uh, it's got most of the kind of popular uh, business design um, uh, organizational planning and all that kind of uh, diagrams um, so all the planning tools all that kind of stuff are on there and you can just select one of those and drop it into your map and you can have as many of those on your your um, board as you like uh, it's actually slightly overwhelming range and i spent quite a lot of time uh, going through these trying to decide which one to use for it each particular job i've got so i mean there's just you know everything it's amazing and i think there's there's new ones being added all the time um so Mind map is one I've used quite a lot. So there's mind map. Um, what was it? Concept map? No, I think I used mind map. Concept map, slightly different layout, flow chart, all of those kinds of things. So I think we've got empathy map on there, which is one we use in design thinking quite a lot. Select it, add it to your board, move it to where you want, uh, etc. It's just quite amazing. Now here's the value in uh, doing this in a team. So you'll see I've got custom templates down there. And if I click on shared, we've got some custom templates that Bo and I have set up uh, for the design thinking. We're starting to make our own templates. So Crazy8, that's a design thinking method that um, we use sometimes. We've created a template for that. Uh, this Donald Norman analysis thing. Uh, is another one. I'll just drop one of those onto the page so you'll see what I mean. So let's. Uh, there we go. So it's just put that's a whole frame that I've taken and I'm 
saved it as a template or it's locked. I need to unlock it. I've got to mention about locking in a minute. So just move it around a little bit. Uh, when you hover your pointer over a frame, you get all of these. Um, and also the individual items, there's loads of options. One of the options is to lock, which means that it can't be moved. And when you're doing a collaboration with people, you've got these sort of big frames you want them to be working in. As we've learned, lock the frame so that it doesn't get moved around. Um, but this template we've used, I'll show you an example in a minute, we've used a few times now, and it's got a pack of post-it notes, which you can ease from the template, you can drop a pack of post-it notes, uh, sticky notes in, different colors. And I've created a color code that says what they mean. And then there's a continuum from left, most good, neutral, really bad. And it's a kind of standard design thinking exercise where we're responding to a design getting a sticky note and moving it between most good, really bad, and saying what aspect of the design we're talking about. So we've created that ourselves as a template. It is so you can do that with individual frames or groups of things uh, or whole boards. So you can set up a whole board as a template as well. OK, so if you're teaching or you're running a design sprint, the two things are very similar. You can set up a structure for your board that you're going to use in advance as a template and use it repeatedly, which is what we've done. So not only if we got bits of boards as templates, we can do whole boards as templates, which is so that's actually for teaching, that's one of them. The, and also for running design sprints, uh, organizing design thinking activities, that's the most amazing thing, being able to do those templates. <clears throat> um, I'll just show you, oh, if I, actually no, I'll go to one of these others over here. So what needs to be considered Let's just pick that element out, click on the more there and save as template. So you can turn that into a template or a whole board into a template. Um, to turn a whole board into a template, there's uh, a hot, where is it? I can't see it now. Uh, save board as template. But notice is also save the board as an image, save as a PDF and it'll do a brilliant job of exporting it. Or you can save individual frames as images or PDFs, which is just brilliant. Uh, so, for example, if a group of students run a design sprint in this, you can export uh, the whole board and it will create a series of uh, pages in a PDF with your board in for each of the frames. Or you can export just a specific bit of it and use that in your assessed work. Okay. So we've got um, board, how to navigate around it, how to share it, the tools that you can use for putting stuff on the board. Oh, there's more actually, I should say more. Upload allows you to upload files. Uh, there's a web clip of thing as well. Um, and that the three dots at the bottom has a load of what they call apps, which are. Uh, so there's an icon finder web page capture will, for example, if we put a. We give it a URL. Click OK. Uh, maybe a little bit snow. So it's actually going to embed that web page into the board. Obviously, this is a very long web page. So there you go. And then I can move that. And I'm just going to 
shrink it down because don't forget you can easily zoom in to see the detail uh, now where is it oh that one there prop so, uh, too much of it we can crop just the bit that we want and the same works for images um, and you can put videos from YouTube or um, the other site I've forgotten what it's called you can put videos in there too so you can get all of these elements images oh, you can see there I've got some mind maps there that I've put in and developed so that was another little collaborative exercise we were doing and I think there's an example of is it in this one no it's on a different board grids so grid is another kind of thing it's just like a table that you can embed uh, it's pretty um, amazing range of functionality and that doesn't even go into things like commenting so it's possible to add comments there's a chat system uh, notes there's so much to it um, you can give you can assign tasks to people in here so you might uh, say completing that mind map assign that as a task to somebody uh, which I've not done yet, um, which is pretty amazing. So, OK, I'm just going to show you a different example. So this is very much a free form kind of board while I'm at it. I'm just going to, to unlock that frame and delete it, and delete all its contents as well. I think that might be still I'll do that later. <laughs> OK, so. It, here's an example of a much more pre-planned and structured board. So if you're going to use this for teaching or you're going to run a design sprint in it, then you might want to think about creating a structure. Um, and this is the first design sprint we did uh, with students. We ran it for the, both the undergraduates and the postgraduates. Um, so we did a design sprint and I created this structure in advance. OK, so I'm going to use another feature here, which is a present mode. So down in the bottom left hand corner, there's a whole load of other tools, one of which is if I click on the thing in the left. I didn't mention frames, did I? Oh, let me just step back a second and say so frames. There's a frame tool there. You can add a blank frame in and resize it and reorient it, or you can wrap a frame around any content that's on the page. And um, that allows you to then move all of the contents of the frame in one group like that. So you treat it as a group. You can export the frame as an image, a PDF. I better lock it, actually. We don't want it moved around too much. Um, so the frame is that sort of unit of organization and you can see what I've done here is set up the board as a series of frames I've got rows of frames the, the top three is three stages in setting up the design sprint and introducing the problem uh, a proposed idea and some background information and then there's four boards group one group two group three group four which work uh, you can probably recognize that template used four times uh, and that's the was used for the breakout groups and teams to respond to the design idea uh, using that format and then there's a third row which we actually did in the second workshop uh, which contains a persona exercise that was set up so I put the photo on there uh, gave a name a little bit of information and there was a pack of sticky notes which the students have put around there to complete the persona and an empathy map which is one of the standard templates so we have three of those as well so I set up the sprint basically set up the event as a whole series of frames so it's kind of structured it in advance which is one of the sort of key techniques in design thinking students if you're watching this 
you're going to do this kind of thing for your group project. This will get you that kind of higher level facilitating design thinking, managing design thinking, high grades uh, in your work. Uh, members of staff, if you do that as well, I'll give you high grades too. So um, with the sprint set up, actually what I'll do is just go back to boards and create a new board. Uh, let's create it in here. Um, call it demo. I'm not going to notify the members. Create and share. When you create a new board, it asks you if you want to use a template for it. And here we go. Uh, it's actually on our shared templates, and we can see we've got that design sprint uh, as a template. So I'll just create a new one of those. I'll share the um, link with you in a second. You can see that I've got that whole design sprint uh, empty of contributions from the participants now set up and ready to go in an instant. So if you were to run a design sprint repeatedly with a group, different groups of people, you'd do that. Or if you were teaching and you had a lesson that you wanted to repeat a structure, then you could set that up as a template and keep running it which I just think is just absolutely amazing. Um, I'll share the link to that uh, with you in a minute and you can have a play with it. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you how I introduced it. So again, students remember that thing about um, facilitating design thinking and managing design thinking. Uh, if you're going to have a bunch of people uh, who are going to do your design sprint with you, then you've got to introduce it to them. Um, Miro's got this amazing presentation tool uh, built in. So bottom left hand corner, one of the links is for presentation mode. There's also the frames link. So clicking on frames gives you basically what is effectively a slide sorter. So it's treating each of the frames as being a slide in the presentation and you can drag them up and down and put them in the right order. And then I'll hide that, go into presentation mode and it's basically treating each of the frames as a slide and there's a controller at the bottom that allows us to move between them so introducing the sprint to the participants i was able to say okay so this frame gives us the problem which is chronic overcrowding at the university in 2023 plus flooding what are we going to do and then next frame proposed solution we're going to build skyways between all the buildings and I've embedded a video Minneapolis Skyway guide in there to give people an idea on what that's like. Um, the next frame gave the participants some background information. When he went off into breakout rooms, I said, just go and explore the background information. Uh, there's another video there, which is actually a fun kind of movie video uh, from YouTube and a link to a podcast, which um, is a, gives a very critical view of that design solution. And then we went on to the activity. So this was the first um, bit of co-designing that we were doing. And I was able to tell, the, 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 tell them how this works and what they needed to do in this activity uh, and so on. And then we went, they went off and did each of those frames, came back and we were able to go back through this presentation view to review what each of the groups had put on there. OK, and that's the next part of the design sprint, which was introduced. Actually, we did that in the second workshop. So I'll just go out of design mode now, a presentation mode. Um, so remember, one of the things we can do is give a link to a specific uh, frame as well. So I was able to I don't think I did that in this case, but I could have did a, a separate link for each of the breakout groups to go and work on. And that takes them straight to the frame they're going to collaborate on. But what I'll do just quickly is now just give you access to this board and you can have a play with it and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to make sure anyone with the link can edit, copy the board link, go to the Teams chat, 
and give you the link and you'll see just how slick this is as a way to get people collaborating. So you can open that link in Miro or in your um, web browser and it will take you, I think you'll see it like that. Ah, oh, I can see. So straight away we can see people have got on there. I bet it's my students because you've done this a few times and it's so fast. We can see their cursors. I can stand back and actually see what they're looking at. So Diana's gone straight off to the middle there and I could say, okay, Diana, could you just take a little group there and go off to um, group one response and just grab some post-it notes, some sticky notes and respond to the design idea there. Uh, if you want to just have a play with this for a few minutes and add anything you like to this board, that's fine. You just mess it up. It's only a blank template. We've got, got the template of it. So try putting some other elements in and scribbling and whatever, and just explore the board. And any questions while you're doing that? Hi, Rob, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you well. Um, can we embed um, audio in these sticky notes? Ah, uh, sadly not. This is one of the few things that it doesn't do, and I know there's been a lot of demand for that. Mm. Uh, so putting little audio notes in there, um, which I think you can do in Padlet quite yeah. easily and video. Uh, so you'd have to record the audio somewhere. It, Miro doesn't provide a facility for hosting those files as far as I know. And I'm not sure you can upload them. OK, uh, possibly. I don't know. I'm liking this. It's good fun. Yeah. But you can see over in the. Um, background board here. I just put a link to the podcast uh, web page, uh, which is fine. You can see some people scribbling there in in the group one response. You can see how it all, you know, we, we all see it happening live. And if you're in a Teams meeting or a breakout room, you can talk to each other mm -hmm. as you're doing this and explain uh, one of the things we're looking for in the design thinking uh, workshops, the modules, is lots of design people talking what they're putting on there and explaining to each other, uh, which is. Uh, really Can important. somebody else edit my sticky note? I think so, yeah. Uh, now, I'm sure there's a way in which you can prevent that. You can lock it. So if you click mm -hmm. on it, bring up the little menu and click the lock. Mm -hmm. uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, lock. Mm. But it's designed as very much a collaborative thing. So um, I think uh, the idea is that anybody can edit anything. Uh, you can add an emoji. Oh, look at all that. How exciting. You can tag it so you can have a sort of classify stuff across your whole board using a system of tags. Um, it's interesting, yeah, isn't it? So if somebody wanted to embed an audio file, they'd have to record it somewhere else and then yeah, yeah. Um, embed it. Yeah? yeah, yeah, I think so. So it doesn't have that as a simple facility how come how come you've you've identified the one thing that it doesn't do because i'm deaf i know um and i i work a lot with accessibility ah, so, okay um for right. students who are chinese mm. it's actually quite sweet if they can you know add little bits and pieces yeah you know so i think it's quite you know it's a huge enabler audio um so I've been working on that quite a lot, especially with the international students. Mm. Um, and I'm also working on a little design which needs something which I can drag and drop with an audio file. So if this did it, it would be pretty cool. Yeah. Ooh. Worth having a play with it and seeing what you can do. I think there must be a roadmap and I bet they've got stuff coming out. Yeah um it's there's pretty pretty much an active development process uh, and I'm, i saw um forums and a blog where you can interact with them and make requests uh, which is good and they make announcements on the i think i saw on the feed 
uh, there, no, it's not on the feed. It must be in this, uh, hit the question mark. Uh, what's new? That's where it is. I like the fact that you've got this kind of um, key in the bottom right hand corner so you can find things quite easily. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's really, really, really yeah. good. If you've got a big, complicated board, uh, that's so important. Has anyone used this yet for module design? Because I think it would really lend itself, you know. It's revisiting the work we did on ABC design and some other models. Uh, not entirely happy with the ABC approach, though, so thinking of a different pattern. I just think that this would be a really nice way to design, you know, to design courses because you can hack it around really easily. Mm. And that's really the way our mind works, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what's it's a playful space. Yeah. And of course, it's possible, for example, to uh, say you've got a frame uh, that's the first prototype of an idea, lots of bits in there, mm -hmm. and you just want to preserve that as is. You can mm -hmm. lock it, make a copy of it, move it along, and then just work on the copy. Yeah. I think I could see this being a really, I can see why you've, you've used it for design sprints. I mean, it's, it's perfect. I've not really dug into it in any great depth because I've been deep in the recesses of yeah. module approval. So it's been, it's all, read and review but I think when we get to the next stage which is taking those modules from an MA1 and starting to visualize them mm. um, this could be a really nice way for us to work collaboratively I could see it working face to face and virtually yeah so yeah. yeah you can imagine this on a big big screen in the room because it's, it's a lot more flexible than a traditional whiteboard yeah I think once I once I at first I didn't get it, but once I'd realised that you the frames setting up the frames is key, and then creating templates. Uh, once you realise that, then that's like bingo, you've got it. That's an amazing uh, thing to do. Okay, well, gone on much longer than expected. So, uh, any more questions before we finish? I think the thing is just to you know get on there and have a play with with it. Uh, it's really really important to just try it out. Well, hopefully I've sort of got got over the the kind of basic principles of the system, and once you start using it, it's very easy to find out how it all works. Um, for people in WMG, I've asked Kim um, Watts to put together a mirror user group because we've had quite a lot of interest and Kim's really cut the path with it yeah um, so if you contact Kim she's going to set up a little teams group so people who will work oh, on Miro can collaborate and just kick it around a bit yeah. yeah so it's kind of a show and tell and she'll also pop in and you know share her expertise because she's working she's got contacts directly within Miro which is quite handy Right. What I'm trying to work out with Miro is that whole thing about guarantees. So because we don't have a contract with them, we want better assurances uh, that, you know, the free. The free uh, account uh, for, for teachers is going to be there permanently, you know, not just going to take it away. Uh, with no warning. That's the yeah. one thing we're worried about. But I think in this mode where, for example, uh, the design thinking students can use this to run a design sprint at a particular time and then export what they've done as a PDF and have that as part of their assessed work. That fits perfectly. So I think that's a safe thing to do. We're OK on that. What other use contexts have you found? Um, oh. Lots of different patterns of design sprints, obviously, mm -hmm. so um, for lots of different purposes. Uh, and also just s simple stuff like you can create a, a, a frame uh, and just use that frame for getting feedback from people. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of classic thing you do in Padlet with a load of post-it notes of mm -hmm. feedback. 
uh, but have it in a single frame. Mm. You could then have another frame, repeat the exercise, build up the information you're getting, uh, and then s create further parts to your board where you're taking all of that feedback and go through kind of next steps of analyzing, synthesizing, planning action. Um, I'm using mindful one to one so I can just, you know, give uh, my line manager a very quick snapshot. And yeah, to be honest, yeah. because I've got so little time at the moment, it means that every week I just give a kind of an update. But then you've got the whole story so you can yeah. scroll back, you know, which is <laughs> quite lovely. But I've not had any time really to dig into this. So this session has been really useful. Just, just, just remember a couple of more contexts. One is, um, so we have an ongoing requirement for a good whiteboard uh, for use in sciences, maths, stats, uh, online collaboration. And I think this could be the best uh, available for that. Obviously, using the using some kind of uh, stylus or whatever to annotate is a brilliant thing to do. So it could be great. Notice I haven't explored tables and charts at all or any of that kind of stuff it does. Uh, so no idea that could be really cool. And uh, for software design, we have the wireframe library. I'm going to be creating um, a uh, Moodle book on wireframing with Miro. I've got a Moodle book on the kind of doing a design sprint. We'll do a Moodle book that people can reuse for wireframing. So you can design mobile applications, websites, desktop applications. I think some of the students will want to do this for their um, design studies. Uh, and it's got all of the classic interface elements there. Uh, oh, so we can get a nice, uh, uh, do I need, to, well, I need to drag it into place. So we've got, oh, it's a bit small. There's a frame for a tablet, iPad and we can drop in interface components and then have a series of those frames to show the uh, flow of interactions in the user interface. Um, that's brilliant. So nice, we've, simple to use. We've got a question here from Andrew. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Can you import vector graphics? I haven't tried. It's worth having a go uh, and see what happens. So try the upload and see what it does. Uh, if not, get onto the Miro forum and ask them uh, about that. Um, so that sounds like the kind, so the, the people who are using Miro, engineers, design professionals of all kinds, it's the kind of thing they might want to do. So I'd be surprised if it doesn't or they don't have a plan. I think Andrew's having Teams problems. Mm. Um, in WMG, I think we've had two people using it for different uses. So um, Paul Doby has used it for a, um, it's like a case study and they work through the case study and respond on the boards, which is really interesting. So there's different questions and the students are reading and responding yeah. them. So there's, yeah. you know, it's like a scenario which is evolving mm -hmm. over time and different information's fed in depending on the questions. Yeah, I saw that, that's a really good one. That, yeah, so. and Neil Davis has just picked it up for his virtual factory game, mm. um, which is always fun. He's done it with that, he normally does that with a physical jigsaw. But he's been quite inspired and picked up it, it up to play his virtual factory game. And I think we've got yeah. another Graham's interested in using it. Um, but I haven't yet been able to unpack what it is for. So, you know, there's mm. quite a lot of interest. But at the moment, it's it's really people using it in anger because they're finding that students' attention is kind of more engaged with the new format. It may be the briny, bright, shiny object, but there's much more well, engagement I, yeah. and collaboration. So there's a there's a lot of thinking on uh, why uh, is I've had an article published recently in Aeon magazine about this. Uh, why is video conferencing uh, teaching online so bloody awful, horrible experience? Uh, I'm about it. 
actually give people things to manipulate, to do, to play with, to interact over, rather than just talking at the little rectangles on the screen. Uh, you're actually doing stuff together, and that's a much more satisfying experience. It also stops you from playing with your phone. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's Andrew. He's you, back again. Fine. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to come back. I'm, I'm, I'm having a slight Teams nightmare here. It keeps uh, whenever I whenever I um, do the the chat thing, it, it disappears the the main window. So yeah, we, we do a lot of that in chemistry, and we we do small group tutorials, and we do um, groups of thirty, and then I've been doing some breakout rooms, you know, in sort of groups of of, uh, of half a dozen or so. And then we would typically use uh, the Microsoft whiteboard function and a lot of our students, well, no, so, some of our students, I think pretty much all of my colleagues now have a um, tablet or a, a Wacom uh, stylus to, to write on with. But, and, you know, quite a few students don't. And unless we, we frequently just resort to holding up a piece of paper and yeah, writing yeah. a piece of paper still, which is often the, you know, the, the simplest way of actually doing things. But I mean, really, online teaching in this mode would be so much more powerful if we could just get, you know, get people um, using a, a, a stylus more regularly yeah. to, to write on. Yeah, you know, we we we're very graphical people, chemists, we, and we want our students to learn in that same mode. And in a in, in a small group tutorial, I would typically ask the students to 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 actually you know, write the answer and show what they're doing. Yeah, I think I'm um, trying to do that with a mouse. It's not really so some kind of cheap. It's a bit clunky. I mean, often students are trying to do this on a phone. Um, you know, it's again the just basic access to the technology. I think the university, if we'd simply bought everyone, uh, you know, a, one of these Wacom styluses or a, a relatively cheap Surface type device, um, you know, that that would have been so much more enabling than many of the other initiatives that have happened around yeah, IT yeah. over the last 12 months. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's I think you're exactly right. And I think it makes a huge difference being able to do that kind of very detailed yeah. tact, but get it digitized and shared. So yeah. this is I hope the students don't mind me sharing this. I think they, they did amazingly well. And I think these are these bits are largely drawn using a mouse. Right. But you can also see that. Uh, so this was the crazy eight exercise where uh, they get eight minutes to fill eight squares, so rectangles with an, uh, each one with a different idea in response to a challenge. Yeah. And we then got them to um, put their ideas into the board. They did really well. Um, so there's some kind of scribbly drawing stuff, but also the other technique is to draw, draw it on paper photograph it and get it onto yeah. the board uh, yes, that's good one. really yeah. quickly, which seems to have worked. I mean, this was a fast exercise, so it seems to have worked effectively um, and good enough for them to be able to communicate their, um, their ideas. Uh, so that's quite impressive. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't know how much, um, did, what, what, at what point you joined us? Uh, Andrew, oh, I was I, I was very late. I think you were just <laughs> almost wrapping up. <laughs> the session's been recorded, but I think what I'm going to do is try to boil boil the whole lot down into a single page. Uh, yeah. Of the basics that you need to know. So I'll get that to you when I've done that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I signed up for a Miro account the other day, and I've, I've look, clicked on the link that you put in the uh, in, in in the chat, and it certainly I'll, I'll I'll go through the the basic introduction that's on the uh, Miro website. Yeah, yeah. Install the app on an iPad as well. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah, it, it, it looks interesting. I think something that's that's going to be a bit more reliable than the uh, Microsoft mm. Whiteboard app within Teams would be quite useful, uh, to say the least. Um, we found this to be completely solidly reliable. Yeah. So one of the frustrations with Whiteboard is that when you're in a one to one uh, with a student, if you do, if we, we do some larger groups and then we do one to one calls and students are much more engaged in, in that in that uh, that kind of setting. Um, you don't get a Whiteboard. There is mm -hmm. no Whiteboard app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's completely yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we just end up you know, with bits of paper held up yeah. to the screen. It's 
Oh, oh, we've we've done quite quite great. well being in Teams meetings and breakout rooms and doing this at the same time and then talking yeah. about what we're doing. So it works nicely. Great. OK, thanks very much indeed. That's good. That's brilliant. Yeah. OK, well, f- yeah. Wow. Thanks, everybody, for uh, coming along and hopefully we've got some more people set up to uh, go away and use this and some students there who hopefully are going to be able to use it in their design challenges for the design thinking modules which is brilliant any final questions before i uh it's oh it's eight o'clock it's my bedtime (laughs) rob just out of interest i mean i found this session really useful and the fact that it's outside of work for me is actually quite helpful because we're Mm. so rammed at the moment um what are your thoughts are you going to be doing little updates like this regularly because they are they're great actually uh so this is actually organized at request of the students. We did a crowdsourcing exercise halfway through the module and said anything extra you want. And this is one of the things they asked for. Mm-hmm. So um, for nobody's got anything to do in the evenings. Let's try it in the evening. That seems to have worked. Mm-hmm. There's another thing they asked for, which was something kind of WordPress and uh, web publishing and that kind of stuff. So next week, I'm going to try and do that same time. I think it is. Um, but I'm actually happy to do it because I quite enjoy uh, I enjoy the format. And I'm so boring, I've got nothing else to do in the evenings other than write. So well, it's either I, this or writing. Uh, I felt quite inspired by it. I haven't had time to really do much more than, you know, download it and, and bash a few things out. But I could see the applications for my area. So I really appreciate you taking the time here. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, I've got a new job as well. So uh, we're doing a lot more of this as part of that. Uh, Although it is, strictly speaking, just for the arts faculty, but I think I'll let you in. Okay. thank you. Appreciate that. You take care. I've got to go. Okay. thanks. Lovely to see you all. If nobody else has got any more questions or anything. uh, Thank you, Rob. That was really good. You can all get started with that. So on, on 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 Miro, please, Rob. The, the, there was um, an option to join just a couple of teams. I think there's one called Rainbow Team and something else. Are they anything in particular? For, for what? Uh, should, should I join those? I think there are people using it at Warwick and they've set up teams already. Okay, so uh, so I don't know what they are. Okay. Um, Rainbow Textiles is is Paul Doby's one, which is a lovely um, task where students have to find the right questions um you know right. they're asking questions and they get the information based on the questions and then they um prepare solutions to a certain business inv- um, scenario so it's really fascinating right that's uh, something that paul doby and kim watts have worked on together it's it's a lovely piece okay uh, so, so I mean, if you ask paul i'm sure he'd be happy actually i did a video of it so i can share with you the video if you like yeah, thanks. That might be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, we should find it easy to um, share templates for frames or whole boards uh, so that we can share lessons or designs, print designs or whatever uh, setups across the whole university as well, which would be really cool to see that happen. Uh, OK, I'm just getting Paul's um, video in and he did it last week, so. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, chat, Diane. yeah. I'll I'll put the link in the chat. So I'll, I'll have to look at it later because I think if I go to the chat, it will crash the the rest of Teams. I don't know what's <laughs> it was doing this today in a presentation. I, I don't know, don't know why I haven't had that problem before. Okay, I'm going to stop stop recording. Hopefully. I'll...